everyone, Jeremy Blum here. I'm really excited to bring you this new tutorial series. We're going to have a lot of fun with it. The Arduino is an awesome open source platform microcontroller that you use for doing electronics projects, automating things, it does inputs and outputs, interrupts, things like that. We're going to go through all that in this tutorial series. I'm going to be releasing one video uh, every week each Monday. The first one might actually be a little bit early, but after that it will be every Monday. And uh, yeah, it should be a lot of fun. If whether you're a beginner who's never used electronics before, or if you're a veteran who's been working with microcontrollers forever but have never used the Arduino platform, this is going to be a great video series. The first few are going to start off pretty simple, getting you intro to the basics of the Arduino, how it works, getting the software installed, uh, making simple circuits, the blink LEDs and stuff like that, and then we'll get a little bit more complicated later on. And it should be a lot of fun. So let's get started. Here's a few of the things that you're going to need to run through these tutorials and work with an Arduino platform. Of course, you first need the actual Arduino. You'll need a USB cable for that Arduino so you can program it. That also powers the Arduino while it's plugged into the computer. If you want to use the Arduino not plugged into the computer, once you finish programming it, you'll need a power supply of some kind. You will also need a breadboard. Breadboards are extremely useful for prototyping out your electronic circuits. We'll be running through several different types of circuits that you can use to light LEDs, run speakers, use motors, things like that. You're going to need LEDs and resistors for a lot of the tests we'll be running. You might want a speaker or two so you can make sounds with your Arduino. A motor, DC motors we'll be using, server motors we'll be using, we might get time to use a stepper motor. And then a few other sensors as we run down the line and I'll be telling you what those are as we get closer to those tutorials. But as a preview, we'll probably be using some flex sensors some force sensors, and some light sensors. You can see a couple of the Arduino projects that I've done myself. Uh, you can click on each one and it'll link you to the, the YouTube video that's associated with it. These are just a few examples of the many, many things you can do with Arduino. And hopefully you'll find these interesting and maybe it'll give you some inspiration for projects that you want to pursue on your own once we've gone through the processes of using an Arduino in this tutorial series. So what is Arduino? Arduino is this open source hardware prototyping platform that's based around the Atmel Atmega series of microcontrollers. And you can program those on your own using something called an ISP programmer. And you program those in C code, uh, which is something I've done for several projects uh, in my research lab at school. But, and, it, and that's really nice and you can do a lot of really cool things with them. But for the average person, C code is annoying and cumbersome and it can make it difficult to do the really exciting things that you might want to do with a microcontroller. So what Arduino does is it extracts away that extra information. It gives you the Arduino programming environment, which is a lot simpler than C. Uh, and the way it does that is there's a special piece of firmware loaded on here. The Arduino firmware is loaded on to this at mega chip that comes preloaded on Arduino boards. And then you program it in the Arduino programming language, which we'll walk through in this tutorial series. So basically, this is the Arduino Uno. This is probably what we're going to use mostly in the tutorial series, but you're welcome to use many of the different kinds of Arduinos. Arduino is open source hardware, which means you don't actually have to get an Arduino branded Arduino. Uh, they release the schematics openly, and you can build it your own using parts you have lying around or that you want to buy, and you can install the firmware onto it with an ISP program if you want to do that yourself. There's a lot of ways to use an Arduino uh, microcontroller. But we're probably going to stick to the Uno because this is the easiest one to get. Uh, you can go grab it at element-14.com. It has a USB port for programming, uh, a uh, DC power jack, the power regulator for that. You can power this thing via a battery, or you can power it via a DC power source that plugs into the wall. Uh, we have reset button, ISP programmer, the actual Atmega chip itself, and then a bunch of ports for plugging in your inputs and outputs. And that's basically the Arduino Uno in a nutshell. So let's now take a look at how you get your computer set up to be able to program your Arduino. Start by navigating to Arduino's website in order to download the open source Arduino programming environment. It's arduino.cc. Click on the download button. Scroll down. Download the version for whatever operating system you're running on. I'm on Windows right now. And it's just a zip file. You don't actually have to install anything. So just download it to your desktop or wherever you want to put it. And then uh, download it. Wait for it to extract. And uh, that's it. You're ready to run the program. So what you then do is just open up the program. 
We now have the Arduino programming environment open for the first time. Let's always start by saving our file first so that we don't lose it. And we'll just save it on the desktop right now. Demo. Arduino programs are always saved in a folder with the same name as the sketch. The sketch is what Arduino calls the program. It's called the sketch. The next thing you want to do is make sure you're set up to program the right type of Arduino. So if you go to Tools and Board, you want to make sure you have the right one selected. We're using the Arduino Uno, so you'll select that one. If you're using a different Arduino, make sure you select the appropriate thing from the drop-down menu. We're now ready to program our Arduino. To get us started, let's walk through making a very simple Arduino program. All this program is going to do is going to blink the onboard LED on and off. All Arduinos have an LED connected to pin 13, so we don't even have to hook up any external circuitry. We're just going to make the built-in LED blink on and off. It's always a good idea to start by commenting your code. In Arduino, you do this either with a double slash for a single line comment or a slash star for multi-line comment. And we'll call this Jeremy's first program. It's awesome. It's always a good idea to define constants at the top of your program. So let's do that. Int LED pin equals 13. So for those of you who haven't done much programming before, all this is doing is saying that there's an integer, 13. An integer is just a whole number. Um, and this constant is, or this variable is defining what pin on the Arduino the LED is hooked up to. It's pin 13. All Arduino programs have to have two methods in them. The first one is void setup, which looks like that. And the content of that is going to go inside these brackets. The second part of in every Arduino program, it can be empty if you want, but it has to be there, is void loop. And what these two parts of the program are doing is the first one is setting up things that will run once at the beginning of the program when the Arduino is turned on. And the loop part of the program is setting up things that will run continuously in a loop forever as long as the Arduino is on. And this is something that you very commonly want to achieve with a microcontroller. You want to have it do something forever until you turn it off. In the setup program, making sure we comment everything, we're going to initialize the digital pins as outputs. All the pins on the Arduino can be used as both inputs and outputs, and we'll talk a little bit more about how you actually do that. But for right now, if we're outputting to an LED, we're turning an LED on or off, we want to make sure that LED pin 13 that we set before is set as an output. And in the Arduino programming environment, you set that with the command pin mode. So pin mode, the arg there are two arguments that pin mode takes. The actual pin that you want to set, in this case it's LED pin, and whether well, you want it to be an input or output, and we want it to be an output. And you always terminate every line with a semicolon. Now we're going to write our loop. So the loop is very simple. All it's going to do is turn the LED high or on, wait a little bit, turn it off, and then wait a little bit. And then it'll repeat and keep blinking the LED on and off. So to set the value for a digital pin, you use a command called digital write. Once again, it takes two arguments. The first one is which one you want to write to. Again, it's going to be LED pin. And whether you want to set it high or low. High means on, low means off. So we're going to start by setting it high. Now we want it to stay high before it does the next thing. So we'll put a delay in there. The delay takes an argument in milliseconds. So 1,000 milliseconds is one second. So we'll put in 1,000. That'll keep the LED on for one second until we do the next command, digital write. LED pin low, and that will turn it back off again. And then we want it to stay low for a second. Delay 1000, and then I'll keep it off for a second. And then at the end here, it'll loop from the last thing it did back up to the beginning of the loop where it'll turn it on again. So this will cause the LED to blink on or off, holding for one second each time. And that's our first Arduino program. That's all there is to it. Now we're going to take our USB cable and plug it into the computer 
and the Arduino. Like that. See the LED, the Arduino kind of lights up there. So if you're on Windows, which I am, you're going to have a problem with the Arduino Uno not installing the driver properly. This is because of the change that they made to the USB interface on the Uno board from the older version of the Arduino boards. If you have an older version, it should just install automatically. If you have the Uno though, you'll have to follow these steps. So you're going to click on the Start menu, go to the Control Panel, navigate to System and Security. If you are viewing by category, and you're going to click on System. Now go to Device Manager. Okay, and now you'll see the Arduino Uno over here. Click on that and go to the Update Driver Software option. And we're going to browse the computer for the driver software. And the driver was already downloaded when we downloaded the Arduino software for our Windows computer. So we're going to navigate to that folder, which is on our desktop. And in the Drivers folder, you just click on the Drivers folder right here. Hit OK. Hit Next. It's going to say it can't verify the publisher. That's fine. Install the software anyway. OK, we're all done. You can hit Close. Close out those windows. Close that. And we're ready to program our Arduino. And to do that, all you have to do is hit this little upload button right here. It'll compile it and send it over to the Arduino board. Ah, you have to make sure you have the right COM port selected. It'll say it's done uploading. And now we can take a look at our Arduino board. And as you can see, the LED is flashing once every second. So congratulations, you've just written your very first Arduino program. Okay, that's all the technical stuff I have for you this week. I didn't want to get too crazy, just wanted to make sure you guys had the system set up. Make sure you go out and get an Arduino Uno, or another Arduino if you prefer, and um, breadboard and wires and resistors and LEDs and stuff so you can start experimenting with it. Uh, you can pick up a kit of this stuff, or you can get stuff from element-14.com, or a few other places. Start working on your Arduino projects. If you've used Arduino before, or if you're new to it, uh, start brainstorming ideas. We're going to be sponsoring a contest on Element 14. You'll be able to submit your Arduino projects, uh, both as a video response to one of the videos that I'm uploading, as well as you'll have to post it on the Element 14 forums, and it'll get voted on by other users of the community. And the person with the most votes is going to win a prize. I don't know exactly what the prize is going to be yet, but it should be pretty cool. So start working on your projects, put some videos together, and it should be a lot of fun. And uh, I can't wait to see all your guys' projects. So if you have any comments on the way I'm structuring these videos or anything like that, please feel free to let me know. Remember, you can always leave a comment on the video or uh, visit my website, jeremyblum.com, contact me through the contact form on there, or post a comment on the blog post, whatever. Uh, all right, great, that's it. I look forward to uh, hearing some response from you guys, seeing the projects that you guys are working on. And next week, we're going to get into uh, using some inputs and outputs and doing some more fun, complicated stuff with the Arduino. And it should be an awesome time. All right, thanks for listening, guys. Thanks to Element 14 for helping me to sponsor this video series. They were kind enough to provide a lot of the materials that I'll be using to create these tutorials. Feel free to go visit their website at element14.com. Check out their community, which is a great place to talk to people about electronics, the Arduino, and basically anything else engineering related. And they also have a store where you can buy a lot of the parts that we'll be using in these videos.